Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the first lecture of METR 2023. And in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about reference frames and review how those work. So to start off with, we'll take a look at one type of reference frame that we can work with, which is an inertial reference frame. And simply put, an inertial reference frame is a frame that is not accelerating at all. It can be moving at a constant speed, or it can be moving at a constant velocity, or it can be completely stationary. As long as either one of those things is met, then we can safely say that it is in fact an inertial reference frame. And a few examples of an inertial reference frame, which I kind of already alluded to, uh, say a stationary observer, so let's say you're just sitting here watching this video, not moving at all, you would be an example of an inertial reference frame. And another example of an inertial reference frame might be a car that's cruising along on the highway at a nice constant velocity, meaning it's not turning, it's not accelerating, it's just moving along at a nice constant velocity. That would also be an example of an inertial reference frame. If we contrast that with a non-inertial reference frame, then we would have a reference frame that is accelerating in some shape or fashion. And that acceleration could entail a change in speed, that is, you can be going from slower to faster or faster to slower, or you could also be changing your direction. So a couple examples of that, one might be a balloon that's accelerating upward. And the key takeaway, the key message to determining whether it's inertial or non-inertial is to ask yourself if there's any acceleration involved. If there is acceleration involved, then you're dealing with a non-inertial reference frame. If you do have, if you don't have acceleration, then you're dealing with an inertial reference frame. So uh, acceleration, non-inertial, no acceleration, inertial reference frame. So a balloon accelerating upward, that's an example of a non-inertial reference frame. Another example of a non-inertial reference frame is a merry-go-round or a carousel, which is something that's uh, rotating in a nice, uh, it's, it's rotating at a constant speed for the most part, but the key thing that makes it a non-inertial reference frame is the fact that your direction is always changing. So if you're, rot if you're on a merry-go-round, then you're, the direction that you're facing is constantly changing as the merry-go-round rotates around. And one of the things that, uh, one of the consequences, the physical consequences about a non-inertial reference frame is it gives rise to what we refer to as apparent forces, which aren't really true forces, but it's, uh, it's a force that we can quote-unquote feel as a consequence of being in a non-inertial reference frame. And we'll talk more about that later on when we talk about centrifugal force and Coriolis force. And that's a, that's so that's two reference frames that we can work with. In meteorology, uh, two reference frames that we also like to work with is first a Lagrangian reference frame in which we have a reference frame that's following an object's motion or following the motion of something, whether that, that could also be a blob of air, a parcel of air, or something else that might be in the atmosphere. So examples of that might be an airplane that's traveling through traveling through the sky. That would be an example of a Lagrangian, uh, a Lagrangian reference frame because there is motion involved and we are following the object as it's moving. And also, if we want to do the car example again, then an example of a Lagrangian reference frame would also be a car that is in motion somewhere. So, if we have an, so the, the, for differentiating inertial and non-inertial, we have to ask ourselves if there's acceleration. A differentiating between Lagrangian and Eulerian reference frame, we have to ask, is there any speed or velocity at all? So if there is no speed, then we have an Eulerian reference frame, and if we do have speed or velocity involved, then that is in fact a Lagrangian reference frame. And an Eulerian reference frame, as it says on the screen here, is a reference frame that remains at a fixed point in space. Fixed point in space meaning it's not moving, or we can consider it to be stationary for all intents and purposes. So another example of an Eulerian reference frame might be, again, you watching this video. If you're not moving at all, if you're staying in the same position, then you would be an example of an Eulerian reference frame. But observation stations are also Eulerian reference frames, which is uh, kind of important to keep in mind because most of our weather observations are in Eulerian reference frames. They are from uh, stationary stations that aren't moving at all. So we have to consider those to be Eulerian. And also, Another example of this might be a house. House would be an Eulerian reference frame, unless maybe it's caught in a tornado, then it might be a Lagrangian reference frame. But an average, average everyday life, house is typically considered to be an Eulerian reference frame because it's remaining at the same point in space uh, throughout, its, throughout its duration. And also, as I said before, typically when you're working with something uh, practical or do something uh, in practice in meteorology, most of what you're going to be working with is Eulerian reference frames. So let's take a look at some of the mathematical consequences of these reference frames. And I'm primarily going to focus on the Lagrangian and Eulerian reference frames. 
So from a Lagrangian perspective, we typically use the total derivative to represent a Lagrangian reference frame or calculating quant uh, modeling a Lagrangian reference frame. And this partial derivative with respect to, uh, here I'm using temperature as an example, but this could be any quantity at all. This could be uh, wind, whether that's zonal, meridional, vertical component. It can be relative humidity. It can be pressure. It can be uh, any scalar quantity at all, specific humidity, uh, any scalar quantity at all, or any quantity, physical quantity at all, we can use in places capital T. Here I'm just using temperature, uh, just to sort of uh, just to sort of illustrate, uh, just to il sort of illustrate what's going on here a little bit more easily. So typically, from the Lagrangian perspective, we have the total derivative, which is the Lagrangian term, which is equal to the Eulerian term, this partial derivative, plus all of the external forcings that are acting on our variable, which are trying to change the value of our variable. So if we're looking at temperature as an example, something that can change our temperature would be uh, radiation from the sun or radiational cooling after the sun is set. Those would be examples of a forcing that can change our temperature. Another thing that we often consider, which is very important, is advection, which is in fact, which is itself a forcing term. And the advection is the tendency of a fluid to move, uh, to move stuff around. So let's say. Uh, it's really warm to the south of you and you've got a blasting southerly wind. Well, that southerly wind is going to try and bring those warmer temperatures up north, which would tend to increase the value of the temperature at your specific location. So it's just a tendency of, a, of the ambient wind field to move stuff around, to move uh, higher values or low values of something to another location. And that's an example of a forcing term that we work with. And this is the form that we often like to work with in the meteorology field. Of course, we also have to consider external forcings. But if we can get a form that looks like this, this is really nice because this is actually something that's really easy and nice to work with. So just to sort of reiterate a point that I brought up earlier, this total derivative get represented by the lowercase d, that is the Lagrangian term. This term with the partial derivatives, that is the Eulerian term. And if you think about this from a st strictly mathematical stance, using the notion of a partial derivative, here we're calculating the derivative of temperature with respect to time, the partial derivative, which means we're holding all of our other variables constant. That means we're holding x constant, y constant, and z constant. If our x, y, and z variables are all constant, that means our position is not changing. Our position is not uh, moving around. So that's, and that is the definition of an Eulerian reference frame. An Eulerian reference frame is a point in space that's not moving. If x, y, and z are constant, hence this partial derivative, then we have to have an Eulerian reference frame. And then finally, we have this advection term, which, like I said, is an external forcing term. So that's if we're, so if we're solving for something that's in motion, then we would have to isolate this Lagrangian term, which is something that's already done here. But if we're trying to solve for something that's at a fixed point in space, or as we like to say, an Eulerian reference frame, then we have to isolate the partial derivative, which we have to do a bunch of algebra to do. So we move all this stuff on the right-hand side over to the left-hand side to isolate the partial derivative term. And this would be what we would use if we wanted to solve for something that's at a fixed point in space or in an Eulerian reference frame. You can see we pick up, a bunch of, uh, we pick up some negative signs as a result of that algebra. So that's going to do it for this segment. Uh, in the next segment, we'll take a look at Newton's second law and how that pertains to the atmosphere, sort of a give a brief uh, a first look at that. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.